Hello everybody and welcome to live Barclays Women's Super League coverage of Manchester City versus Everton from the Joy Stadium. The hosts have won all 15 of their league meetings with the Toffees by a mammoth aggregate score of 43 goals to 8. The best 100% win rate the team holds over any opponent in this division. Everton have had a tough start to this calendar year, but they're going a little better in the Cups of late. No doubt about who the favourite would be. Four times City have been runners-up to Chelsea since the last title in 2016, but with eight games to play this time around, they're second to them again, but only just on goals scored. They'll be looking to adjust that today. A chance to go three clear for now. Their form, superb. Their football, superb. The fact that maybe more eyes are on them might just make it a little more pressurised for Everton. Well, they're ninth. An underdog win for them here would see them overtake Leicester and Villa. You wouldn't have given them that much of a chance a few weeks back, but they did snap a four-match losing streak with a thumping FA Cup win and followed it up with a 2-0 victory over West Ham a couple of Sundays ago. That was the first league victory since they beat the same opponents, actually, in early December. It has given them an eight-point cushion on Bristol City, which is, you would think, more than enough to keep them well clear of any relegation trouble. They're probably looking up, not down, but today they're looking at a, a very tough test. It is the only game of this Barclays WSL Saturday. So it is a head chance, head start chance even for both of them. Tomorrow begins the early kickoff with the North London derby. Arsenal, who will be thankful to Manchester City for being a part of the title race again, really. They're at home to Tottenham. Aston Villa against Liverpool should be entertaining. Bristol City are the division's bottom club and they really cannot afford defeat, you would think. At home to Brighton, who are second from bottom right now. West Ham are level with Brighton. They take it on Manchester United and it's Leicester against Chelsea. And this, the scene at the top. When the top two met two weekends ago, Chelsea had the opportunity to be six points clear with eight games to play and to be honest, that probably would have been it. But Manchester City's famous win has tightened it right up there, brought Arsenal back into the hunt. They beat Manchester United. So really it is one out of three again. It's just a different three from last season. And as you can see with the Bristol City at home to Brighton tomorrow, that is a huge game down there. Bristol City surely mustn't lose it. If they do, they would appear to be doomed. All smiles for Manchester City at the moment. That is Jess Park there, taking on a former club here. Scored some goals on loan at Everton last season, all in wins, incidentally. And youngsters been waiting to get some starting time with Manchester City. And it is finally coming now. As one door is closed for Jill Rord, injured. It is very much open for Jess Park, previously only ever a substitute. Bunny Shaw up top. Broke her duck against Chelsea last time out, set up by Jess Park, actually. Top scorer in the league. And a hat-trick at Everton to end 2023 en route to 14 league goals. Not just top for City, but top in the entire Barclays Women's Super League. Hannah Benison coming in for Everton today. She always plays, doesn't always start, but does come in to start this one. Just had a couple of appearances for Sweden over the recent international break. Hasn't scored in the WSL this season, but has got a, a goal in each of the cup competitions. Aurora Galli there with a the headband on. This is the WSL's first Italian when she joined and very much a controlling central midfielder then, but has been latterly playing as a left back and a left wing back. With Brian Sorensen changing things about a bit and needing her quality and versatility. And it looks like she'll be playing there again today. And another slightly readjusted player in that sense, Justin Van Havenmate, the Belgian that Everton brought in from Reading in the off season. Generally a central midfielder for them, occasionally a centre back, and it is that latter role. She's performing at the moment for Everton. 
even more so with Megan Finnegan out today for the first time. Manchester City, clearly favourites to win yet again here. Definitely attracting more attention since that famous and much deserved away win at Chelsea last time out. Does up that pressure just a little. Well, the home fans at the Joy Stadium certainly expecting more joy today. You can't get better form than that of Manchester City. 11 wins running in all competitions. On top of that, the last five of them have all come with clean sheets. Shutting out everybody, including Chelsea. Fans young and old expecting entertainment and expecting a home win. Everton here to try and put the spanner in the works and do the likes of Arsenal and Chelsea a favour. Manager of the month again. Gareth Taylor recently given that accolade. Hard to argue with that, really. He's always on the modest side. He's not a shouter, he doesn't rant. You never really see him overly animated on the touchline. Very calm and cool, even when his side were deep into stoppage time at King's Meadow. Really cannot overestimate how big a deal that victory was. It's clearly there at aside and have been under his tutelage who do win plenty but that was another level the latest weekend of league action kicks off with the form side anywhere in the women's game right now manchester city have won an astonishing 11 games in a row but most astonishingly win number 11 came against the champions chelsea and it came at king's meadow that was a first home defeat for chelsea in three years and it's one that has confirmed what many were beginning to quietly suspect, that City have the chops to take this all the way. They'll hope the international break doesn't break anything. But so will Everton. The guests this afternoon, who themselves won back-to-back -back in League and Cup prior to the pause. Brian Sorensen eyeing... A big upset here today. Let's see if this team can produce it. Well, unusual nowadays to see the same starting 11 in three consecutive games, but that's what Gareth Taylor has done here, and you can see why. He wouldn't want to change anything. Nothing broken, nothing to fix. Such a multi-threat attack at whose sharpest end is the division's top scorer, Bunny Shaw. With... Hemp, Kelly, and so on in support. Friends reunited in the attacking departments today, actually, a pair who played so well together at Bordeaux in France. Shaw's goals there earned her the move to City, and her partner, more often than not, was Katia Snoyes, who leads the line for Everton here. She finished last season with five goals in five games, but this term has brought only one more. She keeps her place, though, around her just one change. And a late call, by all accounts, made only this morning a real blow to Megan Finnegan, who started every match and the only Everton player to do that this season, dropping out. Lucy Hope will drop in to fill the defensive gap and Hannah Benison comes into the Toffees midfield instead. Well, so much made of this oh-so-dangerous Manchester City attack who generally score tons and tons of goals. Funnily enough, lately, the defence has been shining brightest. In the last three games prior to the international interruption, one in each competition, they were all 1-0 wins. Tottenham, Arsenal and Chelsea, all by a single goal to nil. Clean sheets across the board in the last five. So they haven't had to score bucket loads as they usually do. 
if they didn't have belief before that City win at Chelsea, they certainly will now. I suspect they probably did, but the difference now is that the public might be expecting more of a charge too. That brings with it its own pressures. Following a four-game losing streak, Everton beat West Ham United in the league before the international break. They thumped Forest 7-1 in the cup before that, so feeling a little better. Hannah Benison got one of those goals against Forest. Well, they know they're up against it here anyway, with or without Megan Finnegan. Manchester City at home in particular, although everywhere just now, so, so strong. Sean Goto next to Gareth Taylor there. Manchester City goal-scoring star and fan favourite in his own right once upon a time. Well, five of his side's six wins this season have been away from home. This would top the lot, though. Away we go at the Joy Stadium into that slightly fractured part of the schedule, not just with internationals, but with cup ties as well. Even though the league is only resuming now, next up for both of these two is more domestic cup action. And oddly enough, they've both got Chelsea next, even though both have only just played them. City have them in the League Cup semi-final this Thursday and Everton host them in the FA Cup next weekend. Everton in their change strip here, of course. Goals scored has been Everton's issue more than goals conceded. So up against this clean sheet run of City, it's going to be tougher still. Bunny Short. Brings the first cheers with her first run. Here is the always dangerous Hemp. Not a talk about her contract situation at the moment, Lauren Hemp. Coombs. Back to Alex Greenwood, who was an Everton regular from her late teens once upon a time. Quite a long time ago. Three seasons with them. Three more with Liverpool. Hemp here. Taking on Galley. And the first corner of the game goes City's way inside 90 seconds. Definitely reshuffling things at the back here, Everton. Galley. I don't know if she just got dragged over then. On the right side momentarily. As ever, from this flank, Chloe Kelly. Short into Park. Out by Hope. Clever reverse ball into uh, Alexandri. It's just been dispossessed. Manager of the month curse, he'll hope not. That was a pretty easy decision to make, the form his team have been in. And everyone fit and firing. Obviously the three points is all that matters for City today, but the way they can play, and Everton missing their rock at the back in Finnegan. Well, optimistic fans will be thinking it's a chance to get going on the goal difference and goal scored front. And that is all that's separating them and Chelsea at the moment. See, I'm sure, a hungry Man City team 
they do get in front to keep on going and keep on trying to get more and more and more. Here's Park, two in the middle, three in the middle now. Leila Wahabi up from left back. Don't be surprised if this is the pattern today. With Kasparai, the fullback on the other side here. It's a nice touch, that, from Madsen. Press has worked. Cheap giveaway, Buddy Shaw now. Hemp trying to clip it in for sure. It might work out for Coombs. Shoot, they say to Hasegawa. Shoot, she does. Well, of all their attacking threats, Yui Hasegawa isn't necessarily one of them, to be honest, but. He does the hard work so the rest of them can get forward, but when it's domination of the ball like this, she too can. Her only goal this season was a winner last month in the Cup. The 1-0 victory over Tottenham in this run of 1-0s. Courtney Brosnan on the ball here in goal for Everton. Can expect a busy day, I'm sure. Strength on the ball from Benison. Fifth attempt for Bunny Shaw against Chelsea. Finally got her first goal against him, and that was the one. Really well taken to and really well teed up by Jess Park. 14, she's a couple clear of Chelsea's Lauren James at the top. Hannah Benison hasn't opened her account yet, not in the WSL anyway. Over, mate. Slightly awkward bounce for Hope. Dealt with. Another high turnover. We know it's what City do, right? The press. Baron Sorensen was talking about it before the game. Know what's going to happen. No, they'll come for us. He's having the bravery to play around it. Kasparai. Pinched it, but giving it straight back again, and that's too cheap, really, for Everton, because they're not going to get a huge amount of time on the ball. Coach has been saying how they've been training all week on shape and being calm on it. Good as they are, Manchester City aren't going to surprise you with how they well line up at the moment with the consistent selection or what they do. Dealing with it can be another matter altogether. Rare touch here for young Keating who's got in this side and stayed in it. Lily Roebuck not getting a look in and not involved at the moment anyway. It's actually a, a former Everton keeper, Sandy McIver, who is effectively number two to Keating now. And it helps to have such experienced players 
immediately in front of her in uh, Alexandria and Alex Greenwood. Here is the former. Scrappy through that middle third. Hasegawa neatening things up. Leila Wahabi now. It's not just Everton being pressured and hurried by City. There's a bit of it going the other way. And you could just see Alex Greenwood there telling her teammates to calm down. There's a bit of that going on. A bit rushed and frantic. It's a pretty blatant foul on Chloe Kelly. Hope and long for Madsen. I'm not sure if Katja Snoy's up top for Everton has had a touch of the ball yet. They've got the Arsenal loanee as well, Katarina Kuhl, who is fabulous on the ball, but needs to be given it in good areas. And you'd have thought in a match like this, those opportunities will be seriously limited. They've been entirely limited so far, ten minutes in here. Not too many alarm bells at the other end either, though. <laughs> Nicely done by Alexandri. Fans like that. Park in between the lines and allowed to run with it. This is dangerous. Kelly. Van Haven, mate, just tall enough to get there, crucially, with Bunny Shaw waiting. Awkward, Coombs and Shaw, who got the final touch there. I think she's mostly missed it there, Laura Coombs. Just coming from a slightly deeper run. Absolutely onside and just got a skim of the boot. Difficult touch, but an open foot guider required there. and Comes off hope and behind. Solid connection, both in and out. Clever pass to Alexandri. Back out to the corner taker, Chloe Kelly. Five City players in the box. Kelly might go for goal here. She does. It's turned into a handy pass via that deflection. Shaw and Coombs and Hemp. No surprise, Chloe Kelly had a pop at goal. No one's had more of those than her in this entire league this season. Sight surprised that Bunny Shaw didn't go for a goal. So single-minded usually. I suspect she might pull the trigger herself next time. Keating to Kasparai. Greenwood. Too much on that. You can see the pass she was trying.
Nasegawa under pressure. A nice ball from Keating. Kasparov able to take it on the run and keep on going here. Options left and right. Hemp would be the obvious one, and here she is. Hemp pulling it back. Kasparov finds her path to goal blocked. It hit Van Haver, mate. It may just have been curling wide anyway. That would have been a super counter goal. Hope again, Leila Wahabi. Heather Payne, neat and tidy on that far side. Oh no, given away here so cheaply. Bunny Shaw, it's a gift. Best goal scorer in the division. Doesn't need help. Got a whole big bit of it there. And City in front. Oh dear. Gratefully gobbled up by the league's top scorer. But she barely had to do anything for it. You've got to be good as a defence against this Manchester City team. And even then, it's often not enough. But Justine Van Haver, mate, here, I'm afraid, has got this all wrong. Lost her balance. Couldn't sort her feet out. Bunny Shaw did. 1-0. Gift. Justin Van Haver, mate. Will not want to see these replays. They'd actually done pretty well to limit the opportunities till that point. Don't suspect it'll change much of the game plan yet. From an evident point of view, I mean, here's Stenovic, the Norwegian. Benison wasn't the most helpful pass for her either, from Stenovic. Benison managed to just about get there. Spardite in with the challenge, having just had a chance herself. That's a good ball. A decent touch from Madsen too. She needs some help up with her. And actually, it's one a corner. Kasparo coming back with the final touch. And Justin Van Haver, mate, will come up for the corner. Funnily enough, she just made a really important block there. That may or may not have been curling in. And then just moments later that <laughs> near to Van Haver mate Curl back in, it's a decent ball that. Van Haver mate for a minute. Looked a favourite to get there. Stenovic, Benison. And Hemp is onto this. And being followed in a hurry. City coming up too, trying to make it a four on four if they're quick. Nola Wahabi. That goes pain to help. Plug some holes. Job done for now. Pushed away to arm's length at least.
Marcus Bardai. Think she'll be quick enough to get there just. Chloe Kelly. What a brilliant cross as well into Buddy Shaw. Chloe Kelly has done superbly well to be that accurate and powerful with the cross because she's so nearly run out of room here. Cracking ball in. Really was tough chance for Bunny Shaw anyway from that kind of angle, but double touch. And uh, an important one it was too. Lucy Hope getting the toe end. Skimming off the top of Van Havermate's head. Bunny Shaw wrestling to win it back. Well, Harvey lashing it across everybody. It's turned into a pass. Back in it comes. Lauren Hemp, point blank. Straight at Brosnan. Relief for Everton. little bit down on goals by her standards this term, Lauren Hemp. Big one here in the home win against Manchester United though in January. That followed a couple of goals in a comeback win against Aston Villa. At that point for club and country it was five in five, but a slightly barren spell since by her own very high standards. Chasing down, you're seeing there from Rick and Madsen and Katarina Cool on this side, trying to force the City error. Play around it very nicely indeed so far. At some point, Everton have got to try and get Wheeler and Snoyes into the action. Worried about the back door at the moment as Hemp looks to pick out Bunny Shaw. That could have gone anywhere by the glove of Brosnan. It's smashed out by Stenovic. Irish International. Starting to get busy here. Madsen helping it on. Really well contested in there. Cool. Trying to keep the ball at feet, trying to do good things with it. Punished maybe again, Chloe Kelly. Well, it's on target. Not only the most shots on target in this division, Chloe Kelly, out of anybody. The most chances created too. That was another one for the on-target column. That was Hemp's cross earlier on, Bunny Shaw waiting for a tap-in. Kelly, Kasikawa, Kasparai. Very quiet day at the office for the centre backs here, Alexandre and Alex Greenwood. One of these sideways passes, they can both hit the long ball too, and Greenwood showing it there. Get them up the field nicely, Laura Coombs. Something on the counter for Everton here. Heather Payne. It's 
Something for Madsen to chase, at least. I could be on that, though. No one nil can ever be fully comfortable, but this is pretty comfortable. Just a reminder, they are level on points. The Chelsea coming into this weekend. Eight games left for everybody from this weekend onwards. So, even goal difference the same. Just goals scored by which Chelsea stayed on top. But, uh, not if this stays this way, it won't be. Bossing the possession, as you just saw, with two-thirds of the ball. That's, that's a big share. Kelly, one-on-one -on -one with Stenovic, teaser. She's just trying to pop it in there for Lauren Hemp. Right idea, fraction too much on it, I think. <laughs> Beading it in there, a bit of curl. Not quite enough curl, as it turned out. Well, there's a bit of a smile from Courtney Brosnan, so one presumes it can't be too bad. Just hopefully not from her point of view. Actually started the season on the bench. Emily Ramsey played the first couple of goals, uh, games rather. But, uh, Brosnan all the way since then. Team talk here. Almost uh, almost half-time in the first half, a little beyond it. Probably not the worst thing for Brian Sorensen to be able to get the players together. Well, we're going to keep on seeing it, even if Justin Van Havermate never wants to. Nothing wrong with trying to come out with it. Leila Wahabi was wrong side, but it's just a, a little stumble as she tried to play the pass. Fatal, as it turned out. A big Danish flavour to his squad. Funnily enough, not quite as many in the team as there sometimes can be today. Finished sixth last season, Everton. It would be seen as quite a result, I think, in all honesty, to repeat that feat, especially following the start they had to the campaign. First half of the season in general, really. Did lose three out of three in all competitions to kick off the season before they... Finally won a game, and they won at Anfield again, which they do so very well. So much so, you begin to wonder if Liverpool are going to stop playing the, the Derby games there, because Everton have won all of them. Liverpool haven't even scored in any of them, never mind taking a point or three. Brosnan seems OK. Gareth Taylor should be happy enough, but it is only one. Boston fit to continue and Lucy Hope with a little bit of a lip. Waiting to get the uh, the beckon on as we get going again. Short. That's where the space is. Jess Park in it. Kasparai, Chloe Kelly. And the lapping run from Kasparai, nice idea, just pulling the defenders around. 
can be useful even if not used. And Sagawa, Alexandri. Kelly looking for Shaw. Oh, and she's in again from another mistake. Bunny Shaw here. Tried to tear it up for Laura Coombs. That's the second time in this game that Bunny Shaw's tried to find a teammate when you expect her to pull the trigger. Doubly surprising. Certainly a suspicion of offside, but the flag did not go up. I think if that's on Bunny Shaw's right boot, which it could have been there, but not there, she probably would have been pulling the trigger. Disappointing finish that from Laura Coombs. Scored a few this term. Of the two in central midfield, she's the one who's more allowed to go join in. Hasegawa tends to be the one that sticks. Here's Cool, who is such a lovely player to watch, but generally able to show it today. Galley, wasteful, because that's a promising moment for Everton. They're four forward as well. Better pass them than that, Aurora Galley. cannot give it away with cheap passes like that on the rare occasions they get the ball in the city half half an hour gone no threat at all I'm afraid from Everton for those of you out there as neutrals wanting to see a good contest it's a it's a comfortable one nil this for a very good Manchester City side Kara Keating there nothing to do but a bit of basic footwork so far Park. Quick enough and strong enough to hold off Claire Wheeler with Kelly outsider. Here is Chloe Kelly. Look how many are in the box. Oh, she's overhit it. Overhit for Hemp again if Hemp indeed was the target. But the Lionesses star has won it back. But he's short. And Kelly and Kasparai and anywhere will do for Everton. Just on the ropes a bit there. Greenwood, always happy to step up, a little bit lucky to get it back, but she has, Park, nicely done by Jess Park, Leila Wahabi with Bunny Shaw to aim at, it's over her, and Hope got the call to leave it, instead of it too, a bit a few overhit crosses from Manchester City today, otherwise they may well be further ahead than they are. Not merely this one, but Chloe Kelly a moment ago had three. Put it way over all of them in the box there. Game against Chelsea was Jess Park's first league start for Man City. All nine of her previous appearances this term had come from the bench. Played the cup game before that as well, so... Suddenly, three straight starts for someone who's only ever coming off the bench. This is the thing with bad injuries. Really can present such an opportunity. Jill Rod, the ACL injury, one of so, so many in the women's game. That's what has presented Jess Park with that opportunity. Pain for someone, gain for someone else. They only get rid in an aerial way like that when they absolutely have to, Everton. It has cost them once today. But it is the way that just about everybody plays, his team included. many visiting sides come and get much here Everton's away form has been better than their home form well Brosnan came it's going to be okay it's going to be mopped up here but 
That is a let off. One of those horrible moments you imagine as a goalkeeper where. Is that out of play? It was. Where you start to come and then realise you're not going to get there. It's pretty rare you'll see a keeper stop and go back, actually, because obviously they're then stuck in no man's land. And a stand up challenge that did enough. A little bit of shin there. Oh, it's a glove. It's a fingertip outside the box. Got away with that one. Lauren Impey missed it. So did I. You might feel like Everton need every bit of assistance they can get. Gratefully accepted, I suspect. Hasegawa. Nice take that from Park. Benison tried to pull her back, and Benison's pass a little over hit. It's funny, didn't see much of an appeal, did we, from Bunny? Sure, maybe she didn't see it. I mean, obviously, it happens very fast. You could see it flick something on the way through, but. That would have been an interesting call to make. I suspect a yellow card and a free kick. Might easily have been a goal anyway. Hemp, ten minutes to stop his time to go, and there'll be a bit of that. Nicely done by Hemp. Here's Leila Wahabi with three to aim at. No one on the far post. Payne dragged out to the other side there momentarily for Everton. Which means she's not over here. Galley filling in for her now. City ball. Sagawa. Just step off her. She's going to give her time to pick whatever pass she wants. She goes for the simple one with Greenwood coming up to support. Leila Wahabi, not so much a left back in this half, more a, an extra left wing. Allowing Lauren Hemp to do not anything, really. Sagawa down the channel for sure. And Brosnan was confident enough she'd get to that one first. Just keeps on coming back. I suppose the best thing you'd say for Everton is they aren't technically out of this yet by any stretch. It is only one. In a way, City will be equally disappointed at the break, I think, to have only scored one given the domination. Cool. Didn't have that amount of time. Jess Park has pinched it. Shoots at the fans. She's gone for the pass instead to Kelly. Back towards Park and Shaw in there. Kasparai. Up every bit as high in this half as Leila Wahabi on the other half. Jess Park, driving run. Oh, lovely dummy. Just didn't sit for Leila Wahabi to pull the trigger. Super use of the body there. Everyone fell for that. She is again. Van Haven mate in the way. Look where Kiara Keating is. Asagawa. Hollywood ball. And that's a little on the short side. Brosnan had to get out quickly there, try and smother that angle on Bunny Shaw, and she did. 
lovely pass from Yui Hasegawa for Chloe Kelly. Stenovic dealt with it well enough here. Done that bit. And then under hit the pass. Look at that. Frightening statistic. But it also tells you that Everton will be doing very well to get in at the break, only 1-0 down. 12 City shots, six of them on target. Zero and zero in the two columns for the guests here at the Joy Stadium. Very little joy for them so far. Kelly, Jess Park always seemingly there to offer herself to whoever's got the ball. Coombs trying to pop it into Shaw, a little bit fortunate to get the ricochet. Leila Wahabi finds Lauren Hemp. Good running behind from Coombs, just trying to stretch and pull around. Everton defence, Van Haven mate following her, Hemp back to Leila Wahabi. She's got the room for the cross here, has she? She has. Nearly pinched it, Bunny Short. Scored in the cup against Everton as well as the hat-trick in the reverse fixture. Scored in the win over them last season as well. They're sick of the sight of it. Certainly won't be the only defence that is. Everton did score in both league matches against City last term. Albeit late, late goals. So the score lines themselves, you think, oh, they must have been close. They weren't as close as the score lines would suggest. 3 2 to City on that right at the end of the season. Manchester City were 3 0 up for a long time. Everton scored twice right at the end. And the same, actually earlier this season 2-1 City 1 at Everton with Tony Duggan somebody who scored a lot of goals for both clubs of course getting a very very late one for Everton who had been 2-0 down No pressure on Courtney Brosnan here, she'll welcome that. Hope. To get into Galley, Benison finding Bunny Shaw never too far away. And this time it's Park putting the pressure on. It was a comfortable City win here. Looking the head to head a couple of years ago now. Alex Greenwood and Laura Coombs on the score sheet in a 4 0. The score lines at least have been tighter, a bit like. This one here, a tighter scoreline despite a dominant display. That's kind of the theme when these two meet. And another theme is Bunny Shaw scoring the goals.
Layla Wahabi stopping Heather Payne in her tracks, just as Everton looked like they might be able to start posing a problem or two of their own into the final minute of normal time. And Alex Greenwood coming out with the ball. Here is Park. Esparai. A bit of City ball right by the corner flag. Asagawa always given the time to assess her options, pick out Park who keeps on picking out that little position between the lines of midfield and defence. Minimum of three added minutes to the first of those as Manchester City patiently see if they can open up just another little gap to seize through. I don't think a 2-0 lead particularly would be flattering if they were to go in with that. Now then, there's a pass on. And there's a chase on. Payne's not going to beat Alex Greenwood to it. Still not a save for Kiara Keating to make. A little lax there from Coombs. Just gives Everton a chance to get some players up. burgle themselves a, uh, a half-time 1-1 maybe one good ball is all it takes that wasn't and it was offside anyway Oh, it's a gift from Keating. And where the Van Haver make mistake was punished at the other end. This one is not. Huge relief for City's young keeper. He's just given it straight to Ricka Madsen and not been punished for it. Can you imagine? Pain over hit. Big sigh of relief back there. Maybe just lulled into inertia here, Kara Keating has had no pressure at all at any point. Golden opportunity. Gifted back. Not going to get many, if any, like that when you come here. A free opening. Nailu Wahabi now. And three minutes of stoppage time are up. And there is Lauren Impey's whistle. Bunny Shaw. Scoring yet again against Everton. Four games in a row, seven goals in those four games. And this one, unfortunately for Justine van Haver, mate, was put on a plate by the Belgian defender. So it is only a one-goal City lead. It could easily have been more. Whether it'll be enough, we'll find out soon enough.
The opening game of the latest Barclays Women's Super League weekend. Seeing Manchester City with a chance to put themselves top of the table above the champions Chelsea. And they have absolutely bossed the first half at home to Everton. The first chance of this match falling to perhaps the least likely source actually of all their front six. Yui Hasegawa with a shot off target. And plenty of close run things. Bunny Shaw here with a little back heel for Laura Coombs and then Lauren Hemp on target this time but pretty comfortable for Courtney Brosnan who has not had the most comfortable of halves and perhaps not surprisingly at all has been way more busy than Kiara Keating at the other end for 15 minutes Everton were fine then that happened Justine Van Haver mate going to feet the tangle and with the division's top scorer lurking, there's only ever going to be one result here. It's actually a fifth scoring game in a row against Everton for Bunny Shaw, all three this season. Got a hat-trick in the other league match and scored in the cup against them this term already, and that really was, well, unforgivable, really, and way too simple. That was Leila Wahabi with the cross, and then Lauren Hemp with a header as well at the end of it. Everton with not a shot on goal until the final seconds of the half. Manchester City into double figures before the end of the first period. That was one of them. Zoe Kelly here. Invited to shoot, did. He had another one. That shot on target column for the, the player who's had more of them in the Barclays Women's Super League than anybody. Now, this was a curious one. Didn't hear or see anyone appealing for anything. And uh, Courtney Brosnan coming out here clearly gets a touch with the glove. Clear once you've seen it in slow-mo. Anyway, even Buddy Shaw didn't say anything at the time, but it was her who was denied and a real let-off for Everton's busy keeper. Chloe Kelly here just hassling a soft pass really and a Lucy Hope and uh, Brosnan in the way of the, the bunny short tight angled effort and then this out of nowhere right at the end stoppage time Kiara Keating straight to Rika Madsen and a rush of blood couldn't find a finish that really would have been amazing. If this game had uh, gone in at half nil, at uh, half time, 1 1. Incredible. Well, if you saw these numbers and not the goals, 
you'd think Manchester City would probably be three or four goals to the good. As it is, it is only one. That one Everton shot coming in stoppage time there. Gratefully saved by Chiara Keating, who'd made the mistake in the first place. Otherwise, all City, 4-1 in corners. 70% of the football to Everton's 30. 13 shots, six on target. Courtney Brosnan has been every bit as busy as we expected her to be in that Everton goal. But they are still in it because one way or another, City haven't finished their chances. Recent Manchester City are in such a good position and as it stands leading the Barclays Women's Super League is partly because of what they did last time out at Chelsea before the international break. Leopold's now Cuthbert. Oh, she's been robbed by Park. And here is a great chance for Shaw and she's done it. Khadija Shaw with her first goal against Chelsea in the Women's Super League. Jess Park did brilliantly to rob Erin Cuthbert. And Khadija Shaw did the rest. And that is a superb finish from the top goal scorer in the WSL. Park. And she's played in Shaw again, and this time Hampton makes an excellent save. City so close to a second goal straight away. And it's that link-up between Park and Shaw. Hampton equal to it this time. And the corner in towards Alexandri. And it's a more routine save for the Chelsea goalkeeper. Alexandri, who scored the winner at Arsenal in the FA Cup last week. Cuthbert looking for Ramirez. And she's out, muscle Greenwood. Then she goes down. But Abby Byrne says no penalty. Well, was there contact? Greenwood on Ramirez. Here is James. Little scene of her in the first half. Now Ramirez, Leopold's, and Kirby! Fine save this time from Keating. Chelsea's best move of the half, Ramirez and Leopold's involved. And Kirby denied by the fingertips of the City goalkeeper. When it's given away, here is Cuthbert. And it's just too high. At the end of a frustrating first half for the reigning champions. Lawrence. And here's a chance now for James. And it's beyond right. And Charles. And the chance appears to have gone. And it was Gura Wright and unable to fasten onto the cross from Lauren James. Wahabi, well that's a great cross in for Shaw. And she's just unable to apply the finishing touch. Wahabi into that corridor of uncertainty. And Shaw was lunging in. And City on the counter-attack, looking strong again, Wahabi. And here is Coombs. Straight at Hampton this time from the player who won the Women's Super League with Chelsea back in 2015. And on the counter-attack, Manchester City remain a real threat in this game. Park, so much room for her once again. And she's found Kelly. And Chloe Kelly forces another excellent save from Hannah Hampton. And City so close to picking Chelsea off on the break. 
Charles. Now right in Canary. Held up by Wahabi, but Cuthbert, and it's wide! And Aaron Cuthbert going close this time, but the Chelsea captain inches away. Bjorn, another high ball in. Kankovic, saved by Keating, you can surely know! Keating with another save. That is incredible. And Chelsea denied again. Charles, and it's blocked by Kasparai. And Kara Keating with a double save that could win the title. So what a huge win that was last time the WSL was in action prior to the international break. Manchester City trying to follow it up here and they are halfway to doing so. But it's only 1-0 home to Everton. Sunday sees Arsenal against Tottenham. Big game in North London there. Big game at the top of the table. Aston Villa play Liverpool. Bottom club Bristol City play second from bottom Brighton. It's West Ham against Manchester United. And Chelsea still licking their wounds. Go to Leicester. And as it stands, when Chelsea do go to Leicester, they will go there, not top of the table. Any positive result of any sort for Manchester City here will see them be top at the end of this match, at least. Right now, they are three points and one goal of goal difference better off than Chelsea. Everton will be uh, worried that perhaps West Ham or Brighton could be catching them up. So 45 to play at the Joy Stadium, and those 45 minutes will be coming your way very soon indeed. Time change coming for Everton. They are still in this contest at least. One chance and a big chance given to them right at the end of that first half. Alex Greenwood finalising the City team talk here. Martina Piemonte, the Italian striker, is going to come on for Everton. I wonder if that'll mean a change of shape. Might give Katja Snyder a chance to get on the ball. It's Rika Madsen who has come off. Monte got her first goal in the 2-2 against Bristol City in November. The second was a big one. 1-0 one with just a few minutes to go against West Ham. Last time out for Everton. She scored after that to make it 2-0. Huge. Otherwise, they'd be right down there, closer to the Hammers. Indeed, next to them. As it is, they've got that little cushion. 
can they get her and Katia Snoys into the game? They'll just have to be that little more bold, but it's so easily said and not very easily done that against a side that can get at you in so many different ways as City can. But Piemonte straight into the action there with that pass. And here is Snoys. Doubling her touch count in the first few seconds, I suspect. Not by La Alexandri. And uh, something to do with the gloves for Chiara Keating. A decade as a regular goal scorer in the Italian game, Martina Piemonte. 13 of them for Milan last season and a summer recruit. No changes from City, yet again. Third game running with the same lineup, same shape. The only little bit of difference you might see within game time is the two wide players, Hemp and Kelly, switching over temporarily. It's another slightly slack ball out from Keating. Heather Payne with Laura Coombs for company. That's pretty calmly dealt with. Short. Too strong and too quick for Lucy Hope. On go the brakes. Here comes Lauren Hemp. Three at the far post for Lauren Hemp to look for. It's a pretty disappointing ball in, actually, all things considered. Lucy Hope had the head start, but then just putting the brakes on herself to get head to the ball, and Bunny Shaw read it. Couldn't quite punish it. Hemp getting the better of Van Haver, mate. This is Laura Coombs. Well, that had to be well timed, and it really was. Big tackle from Lucy Hope. This she gets that wrong, she's off. Cool. The chance to be looking forward, ball at feet, very rare that. Heather Payne, good cross, Piemonte! <laughs> Everton's best chance. A genuine danger on the counter-attack there, the Toffees. Suspicion of offside, slight touch from Katja Snoyes, a more meaningful one from the newly arrived Martina Piemonte. Tough from this angle, even tougher after that touch. Did well to guide it on target. If she could have kept it down, there's a chance she beats Keating from that angle, but even so, you favour the keeper every time there. But a reminder that the contest is alive for sure. City's long run of clean sheets. Rarely been threatened today, certainly was there though. A reminder, their last five wins have come across three different competitions, all with clean sheets. They won six in a row before that, and they did quite often concede. Brian Sorensen having a chat with fourth official Kirsty Dow. Hemp here, suddenly surrounded, and keeping her feet. Wahabi back to Hasegawa. Six, 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 six. 
It's a nice stand from Piemonte, Heather Payne. It's just a little nibble as that ball went forward. Bit of a throwback Everton kit, this, for those of you of a certain vintage you might remember. I'm going to say late 1980s. Stenovic to Hope. Megan Finnegan was slated to continue her ever-present season, but late decision this morning. And, uh, she wouldn't be up to it. Hope at the back with the armband on. Naila Wahabi. And Alex Greenwood, the former toffee. Three seasons with Liverpool as well after three years with Everton. Title winner with Liverpool, went to Manchester United. One season with Lyon, then to Manchester City in 2020. Too much being a runner-up for Manchester City's liking. Their last league title, 2016. Four years in a row they were runners-up after that. Hemp. Delicious. And not gobbled up. Only Shaw couldn't keep it down. That was hanging up there for her to bang in for 2-0, wasn't it? Great opportunity. And it wasn't above her. She timed the jump well enough, just misguided the header. Good chance. First time she played against Everton was in that 4-0, this fixture, a couple of years ago. She came off the bench then, but uh, didn't score. Including this one, it is five scoring games in a row. It's been a two and a three in there early this season. Lovely from Hasegawa. Sweet feet and off Van Haver, mate, for another City corner. What a good chance for 2-0 there. You feel like it's a matter of time, and quite often that is what comes to fruition. But every now and then, there's a smash and grab. Maybe that's what Everton are clinging on to here. Manchester City might start to get a bit twitchy if they keep making and wasting these opportunities to put a little bit more space between them. Kelly, as ever from this side, it's usually Greenwood from the other. Chloe Kelly into the near post, powered back out past her by Piemonte. Finding Kasparai. Champions Chelsea at Leicester in the final game of this weekend schedule, the evening match on Sunday. I'm sure Emma Hayes and her champions wouldn't have been expecting anything other than yet another City victory here and quite possibly by two or three goals. As it is, they retain hope of a little bonus. Two really good chances for Everton in this game. Nice from Coombs. Hemp and Kelly have swapped as they often will, and this is Lauren Hemp down the right for once. And she squeezed it in. I don't know how. Courtney Brosnan, maybe. Surprised by the fact that Hemp took it on with the left foot, but either way, it's 2-0. Maybe she was blindsided slightly. Well, there is that breathing room. It's taken a long time to come, but it is Manchester City 2, Everton 0.
nice give and go with Laura Coombs. She has venomous power. Lauren Hemp didn't see it there, maybe didn't need it there. It's bobbled its way into the corner. Courtney Brosnan will not be happy about that, I am sure. Maybe just the bounce before her that's done a bit. That'll be relief as much as anything for City. So on top in so many ways of this game. Only now, the cushion. Maybe not one that's going to last very long. Everton looking for an instant response. Heather Payne seemed to have fouled. Manager of the month can breathe a little easier. Short. Sure. The better of Benison, but not Van Haver, mate. Hope. Oh dear. Straight to Chloe Kelly. Very quick to spot that Lauren Hemp was on and Jess Park is on for her. Here she is, Jess Park. Gasparai with the run. Hope with the header. Shaw was the target. Hasegawa here. There's Piemonte, well read. That's nicely played. Really good from Everton. That's how you get out from the back. Piemonte making the run in behind. Snoyes pointing to where she wants it. Lovely way to pass here for Katja Snoyes. And that teammate's in the middle. We couldn't find any of them. Done well to win it back from Hemp and draw the foul, though. Free kick to Everton in a, a decent position. Five targets, out swinging and deep. Pierre Monte round the back. So is the final touch, or indeed the only one? Maybe fractionally offside anyway. Leila Wahabi certainly got a piece of it. But not the last piece. Well, 12 league goals. It's the lowest in the league, and this side need two unanswered ones here away at Manchester City. Although, City seemed determined to give Everton chances. Decent spin, brilliant hit! Make that 13 league goals. Hannah Benison. Out of nothing. But born of a mistake. There have been two or three of them this whole game from Manchester City. Two or three times in an hour that they have looked like they might concede. That's all. But it's their own fault again. Hasegawa caught out initially. Wasn't the most helpful pass. But what a finish. One save all game long for Kiara Keating, and she wasn't getting near that. First WSL goal of the season for Hannah Benison. It is a beauty, and it is one that gives the presumed narrative a bit of a handbrake. Turn here, his team are in it. 
2-1. Long run of City clean sheets. It's over. It ends at five matches. Greenwood back to Keating. And you can see Payne doing the closing down. And that will make Everton feel like they've got an extra player or two for a bit, I suspect. are back at the Joy Stadium in the stands. They've set themselves to very high standards this season, Manchester City, to win at Kings Meadow. Something that nobody's done for three years. You've got to follow it up. They are just at the moment as Coombs wins another corner. Cannot chuck away a two goal lead at home to a far lowlier club. Certainly not if you've got pretensions for the championship. And this side of earned those desires quite brilliantly. Chloe Kelly with the corner. Looked like Van Haver, mate, with the header there before anyone else could get a piece of it. Another corner from the other side. Alex Greenwood. Thumping it towards a crowded six-yard box. Bunny Shaw with another header. Barely had to jump for that one. And... Just like the one at the start of this half. It was all there and couldn't keep it down. Studs barely off the turf here for Bunny Short. Wasted opportunity and not for the first time. Kelly. Coombs, Kelly again, clever dummy. Down she goes, Lauren Impey, uninterested. Some assistant over there who had a decent view of it as well. Chloe Kelly is still down. It's Jess Park. Finds Leila Wahabi, who in turn finds Lauren Hemp. The second goal, hugely significant now. Still going here, Hemp. of pain from Chloe Kelly but on she goes 13 WSL goals in her three years at Everton a really long time ago now she was a fringe player in her teens at Arsenal before that got a few X factors on show one way and another including Alex Greenwood here I like Kelly and three years wearing a different shade of blue, that of Everton's. Alexandri gets a little fortunate to get the ball back. Everton ball, half an hour or so to go. Galley there making a run from midfield to try and get in behind 
down the sides in behind and those are the kind of runs you were not seeing Everton players make in that first half. Katrina Cool looking for someone to throw it. Short. One goal today. Could easily have had a couple more. Little offload for Hemp. Chloe Kelly is in the middle, so is Bunny Short. Lauren Hemp. And another left footer from distance. On target, but simple. Scored in the league win here over Leicester a month ago, Lauren Hemp. A few games without, I've got a couple for England, as I'm sure many of you would have seen. It's Italy the other day. Emma Bissell. Just got her first Everton goal. Loney from Bristol City coming soon. Hemp. Hope allowed to travel with the ball. And here's the goal scorer of Edison, and what a goal. Able to pick her options here as well. No one going close to her. Four in the box. Monte was interested. Katia Snoyes was just offside there. A kneecap and a shoulder, I suspect. Not much more than that. Maybe on the right side of the attack, with either the withdrawal or indeed a repositioning. Heather Payne, but let's see. That we might find out now. Kirsty Dowell is the fourth official with the board. It's Aurora Galley coming off. And there is Emma Bissell. On loan from Bristol City, having helped them up. Just a few places above them in the table right now, but uh, far enough, you'd think. Eight points the difference as it stands. It's definitely a foul from Cool. Trying for a good long while. Got her in the end. Well, Manchester City, not their usual slick selves today, is the truth of this. There's been some nice football, for sure, in patches, but... I guess you can't do it every week. And at the moment, they are still winning every week. They're about 25 minutes away from 12 wins in a row in all competitions. That is super form. It's a slack pass from Hasegawa, though, and every one of those would just give Everton a little bit more encouragement. Thanks to the stunner from Hannah Benison. It is very much still game on here. Jess Park, a little bit more space for Kelly and even more for Leila Wahabi. Bissell has gone in there to that position on the right side of the attack, so the pain just dropping behind a bit. Gareth Taylor yet to use his bench.
again, Jess Park taking up that excellent position and Everton haven't really dealt with that. Coombs, Leila Wahabi. Justine Van Haver made on the slide. We've hit 70 minutes, City corner. Their eighth of the game, Everton have had one. Park taking it short from Kelly. Asagawa just trying to change the angle a bit. Chloe Kelly here. Cross will come in now. Van Haven mate with the header. Coombs, Greenwood maintaining calm. Alexandri. Park back to Lauren Hemp. Twice a scorer for England in that 5 1 win over Italy. Spain. Incidentally, Pierre Monte is uh, unused off the Italian bench in that match. He's doing the closing down there for Everton. That's a good take from Buddy Short. And Chloe Kelly's in a ton of space out here. City trying to make it comfortable again. Chloe Kelly trying to work the room. Oh, she's got it back. And she will get her shot away. Almost surprised to have that opportunity. Not enough conviction behind that one. Wheeler in short. Benison. Needed more from Piemonte there, and it was really well read. Lara Alexandri, that's her game all over, stepping up there. Kelly. That was more slick. That was more Manchester City. Alexandri into Coombs. And there's the touch. Nice to see where that was going to go without the little deflection. Chloe Kelly's getting yet more corner practice here. Again, Van Haven, mate, with the clearance. Sure, with the layoff. <laughs> Busy Coombs. Never misses a game nowadays, Laura Coombs. Spent quite a long time being on the fringes. But then came the exodus of a couple of summers ago with so many quality internationals departing. Manchester City have done very well. Gareth Taylor deserves a huge amount of credit for keeping them such a force, considering the losses there were. The entire midfield, Georgia Stanway, Kira Walsh, Caroline Weir, all went in one off-season. Not only that, Ellen White retired. Lucy Bronze departed. So much experience, so much quality, so many medals. Uh, a new crop now in some departments, certainly in midfield and indeed up front with Bunny Shaw. Trying to do the job that Ellen White did so well for so long. And so far, doing rather well at it.
20 league goals last season, Bunny Short. Five more in the Cups, a couple in Europe. 16 all competitions this term, all but one in the WSL. And she's drawn the foul there. 15 to play plus stoppage time. And it's still the slenderest of leads. With that in mind. Looks like there are changes coming. That's Mary Fowler there. Hemp, head up, easily spells danger, and indeed she finds Kelly. Layla Wahabi up from left back. Cheeky little scoop from Benison, didn't quite work. Hasegawa moves it on. Hemp. Gasparo aware of the threat in behind her there. Katja Snice was just trying to pinch it. A bit of jeopardy there. bit low-key in the crowd here as well at the Joy Stadium maybe it's nerves maybe it's the early kickoff maybe it's just that they expected something a little more comfortable than this absolutely certain if you had offered Brian Sorensen and these Everton players just being one goal down with 15 20 minutes to play they'd have taken their chances on that still in it is Chloe Kelly. Hasegawa. Away from pain. Lovely way to pull that from... Uh, Alexandri. And after a really good run from Park, for about the 15th time today, it's an overhit Manchester City cross. Weird is Kelly. She's hit that really hard. And we'll never know whether it was arcing into the corner or not, because it has clouted Van Haver, mate. Really got hold of it. As did Park with the cross. It's all Belgian has blocked a lot of things today. It's a shame about the individual error on the opening goal. Although, having said that, maybe there are times you stay down. No bad thing. And it will be... Her last action, Chloe Kelly. It was Mary Fowler getting ready to come on. There she is, the Aussie. Being replaced by number eight, Mary Fowler. Bit of a drink and a reset here for Everton. Just look at the raised arms here from Van Haver, mate. Hard to tell whether it burst through or past them. This might give us a bit more of a clue. Well, a bit of both, and if you make sure you lie down afterwards, Lauren Impey is clearly going to think it's a head contact. It still looks like it might well have been. Could have been a penalty, though. It's a risky run, certainly, bringing him up to that height. And this side still can't get clear here. Oh, 
lively game one way or another. Van Haver, mate, has done a lot of really good defending. Unfortunately, that won't be what she takes home from this if Everton don't take home any points. Uh, a regular for Reading, as is so often the case with clubs who are relegated, they lose a lot of their top players. City free kick as we enter the final ten minutes. Going to be a good four or five to add on, though. Short. Hope did well, and in fact has drawn the free kick, actually. That's determined defending, certainly, from Lucy Hope under extreme duress. I think Lucy Hope was asking the question as much in Hope as expectation there. And it's gone her way. Marginal call. Tony Duggan, well, this would be an X-Factor goal, wouldn't it? In their absolute prime, scoring goals for Manchester City, having done so for Everton first time around back. For a second spell now, can you imagine? She came on to score a dramatic late equaliser here. Well, the first part of it's happening. She's coming on. Substitution for Everton, leaving the pitch from the 19, Heather Payne. Being replaced by number nine. Heather Payne making way for her. Scored a late consolation in a League Cup game against City already this season, Tony Duggan. Also scored against Nottingham Forest in the FA Cup the other day. Has not yet scored a WSL goal this season. One of this division's all-time top scorers. Used to bang them in for Everton and then City. A bit of time with Lyon after that. Uh, Barcelona and Atletico Madrid. Champions League. Big clubs, big names, lots of big goals. Still only 32, amazingly. Here's the Hannah Bedison goal that has kept this one in the balance, really. Postage stamp stuff. The underemployed Kiara Keating. Couldn't get there. In off the bar. Green. We're just trying to keep everyone focused and intense here because there's a little bit of drift about the game, isn't there? We've got six minutes of stoppage time to go. And Everton are up the field high. It'll be their throw as well. Now it's nervy times for Manchester City. However comfortable it's felt, they won't be feeling all that comfortable right now, I don't think. City, 20 shots, Everton have had five. That's translated to the narrowest lead you can have in a game of football. Right now, 
Going three points clear of Chelsea here at Leicester to wrap up this WSL weekend. The final game of the programme, in fact, uh, six o'clock Sunday kickoff. That one is Coombs. Keep it or go for it. Fowler to Leila Wahabi. It's patient. I think the answer is keep it rather than go for it. Maybe keep it until they can go for it. Turnover of the ball. Doesn't. Dispossessed. Asagawa. Nothing too ambitious. Brian Sorensen down there, demanding the closing down. Fowler's going to get to this one first. There's only Bunny Shaw in the middle. Fowler might not need it. Oh, dear. Well, that really would have sealed it, having done so well to get there. It's a really disappointing finish. She's pulled it miles wild. Good timing of the run. Looks just onside. Here's the acceleration. See you later, Bissell. Disappointing finish. Last goal was at the start of the year at Durham in the Cup. And still, Everton retain hope, despite having been a pretty distant second best in most departments. Ambitious are they going to be here? Leila Wahabi just with the safe throw into Yui Hasegawa was it really tracked. Final two, Hasegawa. La Alexandri always offering herself. Alex Greenwood with the percentage ball down the channel, but it's an accurate one for Fowler. Scrapping away was cool. Duggan takes over, finds hope. Hope to Stenovic. Hemp, Park outsider. Have to go back to mid November. Manchester City lost a, a League Cup penalty shootout against Leicester. Since then, well, they started this amazing run with a 7-0 win over Tottenham. They have won every game. Now, and this will be 12. Oh, it nearly was absolutely confirmed by Laura Coombs. That is a stunning hit. and It was absolutely destined for the top corner. Courtney Brosnan with a good save. It's still game on by the merest of margins. Brilliant save. Stoppage time coming up. And it's still going to matter thanks to that save. Win! 
low and awkward. Nearly turned into a good bad one. Leia Alexandri trying to turn it into something. Four added minutes and we're into them now. Lovely, calm, technical touches from Mary Fowler. Park. To Wahabi. Hemp. Usually happy to go at any fullback anywhere. Different requirement here. Fowler low and in between everybody in that six yard box. Bissell and Shaw included. Substitution for Everton leaving the pitch for the 27, Elise Stenovic. Elisa Stenovic. They were by number 39, Izzy Hobson. Made way here. And Izzy Hobson making her WSL debut. 16-year-old played in the League Cup game at Leicester in January. That was her club debut. Now getting a couple of minutes here in the WSL. Keating clears under some duress. Everton have a couple of minutes to snatch a most unlikely point. One that will be treated like all three, certainly, by the travelling support and team here. And to be honest, by Arsenal and Chelsea as well, who play tomorrow. Chess Park's had another really good game in there. Really grasping the opportunity to get some starting time over these last few weeks, Chess Park. And, of course, right on cue, she's just lost the ball. Here's Pierre Monte. Hasegawa. A minute away, Man City, from being confirmed on top of the table. There's been nothing overly convincing about this display, and they have been so convincing in so many of the matches in this long winning run. Our player of the match today on number 11, Lauren Head. Locally. Lauren Hemp been given the player of the match accolade. Keating couldn't keep it in. One last throw here, Everton. They've not made anything of it. Well, he might as well have his team go and press. Piemonte doing that. You never know where the ricochet may fall, but it's fallen for a goal kick. Gareth Taylor not sitting down next to Sean Gota now. He's down where his players are. We've had our four minutes. Any for anywhere forward will do for Everton. Short, losing it. There's the whistle. And it is nine league wins in a row for Manchester City, who are, as a result, the new leaders of the Barclays Women's Super League. Certainly not at their recent flu of best today. I'm sure even Gareth Taylor would admit that. Two scrappy goals, really. Bunny Short, fire a gift. And Lauren Hemp's finish was not entirely convincing, but it bobbled past Brosnan there in between. There was uh, 
A flurry of City chances not taken, and just after the second of those City goals, Hannah Benison turned it back to game on again with the best technical moment of this game. But for now at least, Taylor and his players can celebrate being top of the pile. Over to you, Arsenal and Chelsea, because Manchester City have beaten Everton here by two goals to one. Well, from kickoff here, Manchester City bossing the ball. Everton doing their best throughout the game to play out from the back. It cost them here, though. 15 minutes in. Justin Van Haver, mate. Got her own legs in a bit of a tangle under some pressure from Leila Wahabi. And with the league's top scorer around. That was always going to be fatal. Bunny Shaw scoring for the fifth game in a row against Everton her 15th of this league season taking her for now at least further clear she thought she was in again here and might have had another there was actually a, a touch of the glove there from Courtney Brosnan who was outside her box but no one seemed to spot it we were only able to do so really with the uh, aid of a replay after the event you can see there that Brosnan got away with one <laughs> typical energy from Chloe Kelly here forcing the mistake Tight angle for Bunny Short. Keeper always favourite there. Manchester City coming into this behind Chelsea only on goals scored. Knowing that even a draw would see them take top spot. And then right at the end of the half, that. Rika Madsen, the first sight of goal that any Everton player had had at all in the game. This was their first shot, whether off or on target, and Kiara Keating really getting away with one. So I suppose you'd say it's a tale of two mistakes, one punished and one not. Everton brought on Martin Piemonte, who was at the far post there on the end of a really good cross. First proper save that Keating had to make. This was really early in the second half. And then this, Lauren Hemp, little one-two with Laura Coombs and what you would normally call perhaps a, a speculative shot. If a wrong foot, really get the power behind it, but it was accurate enough to squeeze inside that far post and maybe the bounce doing for Courtney Brosnan. That to uh, follow a couple of goals for England for Lauren Hemp. And then here, Manchester City again, their own worst enemies, giving the ball away cheaply. And what a finish this was. Hannah Benison, in her first league goal of the season, having come into the lineup today. Gorgeous finish. And although. Manchester City weren't exactly clinging on. There was definitely tension. Laura Coombs really eased that there. What a wonderful strike from Coombs. A brilliant save from Courtney Brosnan.
Well, 22 shots from Manchester City is a big number. 10 on target is a pretty big number too. They also had 10 corners. And they completely bossed the possession, as one might have expected, as I'm sure Everton expected. Lauren Hemp was announced locally as the player of the match. And the goal for her to celebrate, following two for England the other day against Italy. Four shots, all of them on target. That is pretty impressive. And she's got herself another goal. So City, one way and another, are able to kick off the weekend with the win they expected, the win they needed, really. A little bit of breathing room. Arsenal Spurs at the Emirates again. Another bumper crowd expected there. That's great news for the game. Villa Liverpool tomorrow as well. The bottom two meet in the West Country. And it's Leicester against the champions, Chelsea, who now need to win, as you can see, to take back top spot. Manchester City, one goal better off in goal difference and three points better off than the champions with Arsenal trying to keep up to. City is a happy camp. It is 12 wins in a row in League and Cup. It is nine wins in a row in the Barclays Women's Super League. It's the form of champions. Can they stay there? Goodbye for now.